Okay, I'm gonna do something different today. I'm trying to expand uh, the language I'm trying to use to communicate messages here and I want to hit an audience who's more thirsty for knowledge. So naturally, you got to go to the cards for that. So this is the Liz Green Mythic Tarot deck. I haven't really used this deck that much. So I'm going to use this deck to um, christen this new movement into joining Tarot with astrology. Do my synthesis. However that uh, comes out, we'll see. Different strokes for different folks, you know. So I'm going to start with the sign of Leo here. Now this reading is um, for informational purposes, entertainment purposes, alchemical purposes. You do with it what we, what you will, what we will. You know, um, all this information you take in, it's data points. What resonates with you is what you should go with. And when you're um, going with something, try and check in with yourself, find out where your emotions are at. That's a big fundamental aspect of our um, interpretation of the symbols of life and of the information given to us. All right, so I'm starting with Leo. We're in Leo season. I've got a chart pulled up here for Leo. We're going to get into that after the reading here. So I'm learning to row. I'm just an intuitive person. Um, the more you do, the more you speak, the more you gain clarity, the easier it is to um, interpret and communicate. My nose is itching. That doesn't usually happen to me. Alright, so this is for the sign of Leo. Let's get a couple power stones on me here so that I can channel pure energy. I'm just going to do a nine card spread with a possible um, bottom middle card for clarification at the end. I may pull in three extra cards for um, interpretation of external internal expression. Make more sense as I go. I'm just going to show you the cards uh, as I lay them down. Because I don't have the camera stuff set up and I don't really want to get all fancy with it. I just want it to be nice and easy. Alright, I think we're getting there. Okay, I can hear that one. First card out. How apropos, you know, for these times, Venus retrograde in your sign, five of pentacles. I don't want to make them too long, but as you can see in the interpretation here, it's a guy in a cloak. He's leaving the... Uh, 
the castle doors of five pentacles of lack and he's heading off the moon behind him to his left. So now the masculine energy represents a movement um, to me in this picture. I think that's a red cloak he's wearing, tattered. You know, we learn through our passion, through doing things, and um, that helps us to understand the value of emotional fulfillment. So leave in lack for emotional fulfillment, Ten of Cups here. <laughs> of course, showing up in your own reading, the strength card here. Now that lion looks like it's doped up. They look more like they're wrestling. You know, he's like trying to wake it up or he's giving it the Heimlich. I, I think you're remembering something here about yourself. You know, you've been in the cave to try and understand what it is that's worth expressing, what it is that's worth waking up, showing. Wow, another powerful card, the, magi the ma magician. Musician, what the hell? Maybe you're a musician. He's got all the elements laid down on the stone here. And he's giving the uh, Jupiter finger up, Jupiter finger down. Hmm. Page of Swords. Let's get this thing focused. There we go. This man's toking it up, it appears. He's bringing in the imagination. We're blowing it out. Five of Swords, playing with the mind, with the words, with the ideas, with situations which have um, captured the passion, hmm. stifled the progress to hold the fire against those who may be envious, who may want you to drop it because it makes them feel lack. It makes them hold the lack that they wanted to project upon you. All these choices, you know. You're just looking for a sign to understand which choice might be best. Where's, which emotion is pure? Which one is rooted in your growth? Which one's rooted in the illusions of the past? How do you find the purity of the source? Page of cups here. Which cup is worth the investment? The bottom of the deck, the empress here. Come on, what's with this thing? Yeah, Keo cameras just suck so badly. All right, Empress, whoo, King of Cups wanted to make an appearance. What is this? That's some divine stuff right there. All right, let me just feel into this again. So leaving lack to find your own emotional um, uh, what's the word? Fucking A. Eh? Contentment? We'll go with that. Through rediscovering the strength that was sleeping within yourself, the strength that you had used for the world around you rather than for the construction of your own manifestation. And by your own manifestation, it's an authentic expression, one that isn't rooted in the opinions and the um, objectifications of others or the world around us. 
Oftentimes when we're in page of swords or others are in page of swords, we're um, in replication mode. We're in the mimicry of the fucking shit show around us. We think because of this is success or that success, that's the way to do it. And we get caught up in the replication. The true strength within us is wasted on this five of swords stuff. You know, but you need to go through the Five of Swords stuff to realize the value, the true value. You need to go through that Five of Swords stuff to know which pursuit is worth the fire, what fight is worth the fire. Self-preservation or is it external um, degradation? Others want to see you... Um, Utilize your energy on things that they feel are valuable, things that they feel are worthwhile. Sometimes they want you to use their en your energy on them so that they themselves can grow through your attention, your energy, your focus. And uh, our emotions become a mess. They become guesswork. Our intuition is blocked by emotional baggage of others, situations, and loops. And then we fall into patterns trying to read the signs. But when you're trying to read the signs and you're unbalanced within, the signs are not going to speak to you in a balanced way. So you got to go back to the child within, to the source, the purity. And bring forth your own cup into this world for resonance to happen. And that's when you're in this uh, empress mode. And just uh, quickly, behind the empress was the six of cups. That's soulmate level stuff. Well, that's getting back in tune with the, uh, the purity of the nostalgia. What is sacred? And it brings you into the King of Cups or brings you to the King of Cups. This is the most um, balanced emotional expression. Under that, King of Wands, I see the sun. We got all sorts of stuff. We got fortune. All right, so let's look at the chart real quick here. Okay, so I got this set up whole sign. I'm a poor free man with the house systems, but for ease of uh, breakdown, I just decided to break it into the whole sign so we could get the actual minutes. Because I like detail. I like specifics. So we got the first house here, Leo. Now you might be a Leo sun, you may be a Leo rising, you may be a Leo moon, you may be Leo strong with other placements, or you're progressed Leo in those energies. If you know what secondary progressions are, you know how to check them, maybe look at your secondary progressions if you don't have any Leo. So Leo's going through a lot of transformation, of course. We all are, but Leo is leading the way. We're in Leo season, fixed fire here. It's the purity of the spirit within yourself coming to life through your awareness when it's in the first house. The experiences that you face in this world cultivate the Leo energy through you. So this is the uh, new moon in Leo. I've got that chart pulled up for us. It's within a few days. It's on August 16th. If you're in um, the U.S. Actually, it's probably going to be August 16th for most people. So I got the time set up for Central Standard. But wherever you are, um, we're just looking at it from the individual sign. So we got Venus retrograde just coming out of the Kazemi with the sun being burned of um, all the falsehood of what you held back within yourself, the value that you once held, your uh, 
releasing that now you've gone through the fire the purification process so Venus still retrograde she's going to go back to 12 degrees Leo north node of Neptune and then she will make her way back forward on the shadow path so whatever you have been uh, processing emotionally in relation to your Venusian energies to your Taurian, to your Libran energies. So the value that you have held within yourself, the value you have um, held within your relationships, how those early imprinting experiences, romantic um, endeavors, uh, your relation to the world itself, however that has cultivated you, you are now seeing a more honest expression of what brings you value. How do you want to show up for love in this world? How do you want to give yourself to this world? Most importantly, how do you give the love to yourself so that you can come across in a more authentic expression of who you are? Going back to rewilding the child within yourself to bring the purity forward. So with this new moon here, we've got this opportunity for a new start, for a new realization, an emotional awareness which is brought to us through the waters of Aquarius over here. Now when Aquarius pours, it's starlight coming into the emotions, rising up within to our awareness, and that's feeding the spirit. This is how we grow in life. It's through expression of psyche. So we've got this new moon, sun, moon, and black moon, Lilith. And we've also got Venus. So this is a big stellium here. Now we've got black moon, Lilith at 24 degrees, a new phase conjunction to this new moon. So the repression of the anima within yourself, the feminine that you have repressed, you're able to see it in a new light. A lot of people in this world, they're trying to um, take back what was taken from them using a masculine expression of their force or trying to uh, use force to defeat force in a way and that's not really how you do it you just perpetuate so what black moon Lilith here in this new moon configuration is doing for us it's giving us awareness what is worth um, expressing? How do you carry that fire without burning yourself and the world down? How do you honor yourself without fighting or justifying to anyone else in this world? So now you see the second house of values is um, Virgo at this point. Pallas Athena, which is divine intellect conjunct coming into a balsamic phase conjunction with mercury mercury coming into a balsamic phase conjunction with mars so there's another stellium here so you're realigning and as you can see we got the mars decant here where this new moon is so you're realigning the passion the masculine expression within yourself in a more balanced neutral way one that is of service to the self that way you can be of service to your vision to others in this world to the value the uh, true value of life you've got this perfect square with uranus here and this square with jupiter and venus so we're expanding and we're refining who and what we are through the waters of Aquarius in this time. We had the new moon in Cancer, which brought us to this point, very emotional moon cycle. That's when the awareness starts to rise. And then all these experiences we've been having, everything we've been digesting and everything we will, because Mercury is in the shadow now too, will be going retrograde in a few in about a week maybe after this I gotta look so it's realization here realization of who and what you are through who and what you have been is it in alignment is it balanced does it honor your value is it even valuable for anyone else to continue on with the old ways of being sometimes you have to break from other people 
not only for your benefit, for theirs. North node here trining all this, Aries. We've got Chiron trining, Venus trining all this as well. So we're healing the sense of self, the psychology of the self, and we're in this phase where we can redefine through a new awareness. And you'll see it's a perfect quincunx here between, this is the transformative quincunx between Pallas Athena and Mercury and Chiron. So we are healing the mind, healing our ways of communicating and seeing and expressing. And it's in the Jupiterian Decan, which is squaring Venus here in the Jupiterian Decan. Jupiter's in the Mercurial Decan here. So we've got this um, transfiguration of dynamics comes through you deep within. Sometimes the world needs to knock it into your awareness. Sometimes you knock the world into your awareness. In the third house, this is a gift to the mind here with series here. You're ex examining past experiences in a new way. If you're leaning into your north node, leaning into the transits here, where do you feel driven to go? What feeds your passion? What is the new vision for you in this world? You can bring that into fruition. We've got ninth house here, the house of God, wisdom. North node coming into a balsamic phase conjunction with your MC. So what you choose, when you choose something that uh, reinforces and reinvigorates uh, your spirit and you move forward with that, you are uh, on a, de a destined trajectory. And you are transforming spirit here, your sense of self in relation to the metaphysical picture of reality, the macro to micro. And Saturn here is in the disillusionment phase, and it is um, going to be quincunx working with Juno, so the alchemical wedding, either with another or with yourself. You're realizing who and what you were and weren't based off of old beliefs that no longer serve. Or maybe old beliefs which do serve and you're reinforcing that within yourself. And we've got Pluto opposing Juno. Pluto on your descendant, but in the sixth house. So you're transforming. You can help to transform your perspective of reality through uh, what you do in this world through your routines, through your sense of self, how you honor yourself. It's trining um, Uranus here. Trining Mars, it's a grand earth trine essentially. So true value, which is service to the self, which is of service to others in a way that does not um, proliferate all the shit of the past. So transforming the past without fighting it. All right, so uh, that's the Leo reading. I hope it was beneficial for you. If you want a reading from me, I do astrological readings. Um, and uh, I'm all about transformation and growth. Life is dynamics. We're dynamic. The only static in existence is it's all dynamic. So uh, thanks for watching.